Min Min is an unexplained light phenomenon that has often been reported in outback Australia. The lights are so common and have been around for so many years that they are even part of Aboriginal mythology. Since European settlement, they have now become part of European folklore. Indigenous Australians claim that sightings of the Min Min lights appear to have increased since European settlement when they ventured further into the outback. The name Min Min derives from a small settlement of the same name, located between the outback towns of Bulia and Winton, where the light was observed by Stockman in 1918. However, it has been claimed that the first recorded sighting dates back to 1838. According to folklore, the lights sometimes follow or approach people and disappear when fired upon, sometimes very rapidly, only to reappear later on and anyone who chases the lights and catches them will never return to tell the tale. The Min Min lights are described as shimmering orbs that can range in colour, including blue, white, green, red and yellow, sometimes change between all three, as well as take different sizes. Others have described them having fuzzy edges that appear to pulsate. These lights can move slowly and then suddenly move very fast like a shooting star. One second they may move in a straight line, and the next second they may bounce around. On rare occasions, they have been known to break into two separate lights and then shoot off in two different directions. Some people describe them as having intelligence, but the light actually follows them, and when they try to approach the lights, they quickly move away from them. Others have said that when the lights are around them, they have a feeling of dread and confusion, leaving them feeling uneasy. The lights will suddenly vanish into thin air and can be extremely disconcerting when you're in the middle of nowhere. Other stories regarding the lights claim that they are spirits, while some believe seeing the light was a bad omen. Another interesting fact is that these lights may not be unique to Australia. In Saudi Arabia, people name this phenomenon Abu Fanuz, which means the man with the lamp in Arabic. In the United States, they're often called spook lights, ghost lights or orbs by folklorists and paranormal enthusiasts. The following stories are accounts from people who experienced the Min lights firsthand. Henry Lamond. In 1937, Henry was a rancher who claimed that he'd been out on horseback early one morning at about 2 a.m. As he was riding along singing to himself, he spotted in the distance what he believed to be car's headlights. He initially thought it strange because in 1937, cars were not all that common in the outback, and being miles from anywhere, he thought it unusual. However, things began to get very strange very quickly. The light then appeared to get stronger, so strong that it was able to pick out individual hairs on the horse's mane. It suddenly became apparent to Henry that they were not car headlights because what was heading towards him was not two headlights but a bulbous ball. Instead of the yellowy whitish glow of a car headlight, was actually a greenish glare. And besides, it floated too high in the air to be a car's headlights. Henry felt that there was something very eerie about it. The light looked like a bubble slowly moving around, and he figured it was moving at around 10 miles per hour and about 5 to 10 feet above the ground. It had the appearance of a newly risen moon. The light then shot past him, and when it was about 200 yards away from him, he suddenly vanished, like turning off a light bulb. Bill Boyang In 1937, Bill Boyang worked for a West Australian newspaper called The Western Mail, and wrote a column called On The Trek. On many occasions, he received letters from people claiming to have seen strange lights. Bill himself even had an encounter with the lights. He describes the following. We were all sitting looking into the darkness, well away from the dying campfire and enjoying the cool air after the heat of the day, when he suddenly saw a light. At first, he thought it was someone waving a lantern, but it suddenly rose higher into the air, danced a few jigs and hovered about, first high and then low, but always keeping at about 50 yards distant. This description was almost identical to the previous story of Henry Lamond. He asked his companions where the light had come from, and he suggested they follow it. Then one of the men warned him, saying, It'll lead you to destruction. Where that light is, it leads right into a chasm with a drop of three or four hundred feet. And as soon as he gets close to the light, out it'll go over the abyss. 
but Bo Yang was more curious than superstitious and decided to ignore the warning. He then set off after the light and then strode on into the darkness. He had got to within perhaps 20 yards of the peculiar light, which was still hovering like some huge ball of glowing embers in mid-air, about 7 or 8 feet from the ground, when suddenly it swerved abruptly to one side. A man's warning voice came through the darkness. The abyss ain't a dozen yards from where you are. Come back, come back. He stopped, but not before what he had seen. True to the old fellow's words, that strange light had indeed drifted out over the great chasm. As he watched, the light hesitated, floated back a little towards him, then as though tempting him to follow, but at the same time annoyed at the possibility of losing a victim, it glided back again over the chasm, where, with a few final erratic movements, it dropped from sight. Had Bill Bowen just seen a strange ball of energy, or an intelligent thinking orb? Either way, it did not appear to have his best intentions at heart. Kyle Carl had the following experience with strange lights whilst driving in the outback. He had a long drive from Inaminka in North East South Australia to Boulia in Central West Queensland, a drive that would take him about 10 hours and 30 minutes. From Boulia, he then headed north to the mining town of Mount Isa, that was a further three and a half hours. This is where his unusual event started to happen. After leaving Boulia, he was a few miles out of town when he noticed what he believed to be a pair of headlights tailgating him. After a short while, the glaring light started to get really annoying, so he then beckoned whoever was behind him to overtake, but they just stayed behind him. Carl then tried another tactic by just slowing down, hoping to annoy them so they'd eventually pass. It was at this stage that he suddenly realised that they were not car headlights. He then stopped the car, where the strange lights then flew around his car. He had heard of the local legend and figured they were Mimin lights. He quickly grabbed for his camera to take a photo when one of the lights got close to his car. It then began to hover closer and closer and started to blind him. Then all of a sudden, it dissolved into nothing and seemed to disappear just as the sun came up. The whole ordeal with the Mimin lights frightened him so much that in the future, he always avoided that route. Dan Dan's first experience with the Mimin lights was in 2003-2004, when he was living in the north coast of New South Wales. A friend of Dan's was telling him that he kept seeing what he believed to be people constantly walking around with lights. Dan said there couldn't possibly be people walking around because he lives in the middle of nowhere. Who could possibly be walking around with lights? One night, they both went out to see if they could observe what his friend was talking about, and on that particular evening, found nothing out of the ordinary. They went out again two weeks later, and were looking up at a hill, and saw the white lights dancing around and playing with each other, and appeared to be making the figure eight. They were about 150 to 200 metres away. Their first thought was that they were fireflies, but firstly, they'd never seen fireflies in this area before, and secondly, the lights were far too large to be fireflies. In fact, they were like large basketballs of lights, and they made no sound. They would dim down and then suddenly brighten up and disappear. This was Dan's first sighting of the lights, and because he'd grown up hearing the legend of the Mimwin lights, assumed that is what they were. What confused him was that he believed the lights only appeared in the outback desert regions and not in their coastal region. What further confused him was that if they appeared to be the size of basketballs from 200 metres away, how large were they close up? Although Dan was curious of what these lights could have been, he was not at all afraid. However, his friend was quite fearful and after many years of residing at the property, he had had enough and seeing these lights dancing around was too much for him and he moved out three months later. Dan's property was about 15 minutes away from his friends and a few years later in 2016, started to see the lights near his property. They were white, red and orange in colour and just danced around. One night he was looking out the back of his property and observed a white orb floating around and called his wife. On arriving, she pointed out other lights that were also floating around. Another time, a friend was visiting and pointed out to Dan that there were red orbs high up in the sky. They then drove up high to get a closer look. The previous lights were always close to the ground while these were three red orbs 
high up in the sky. On another occasion, he had some overseas guests visiting at his property, and when Dan was in the backyard, a huge white light appeared about 100 metres in the sky, and he called out his guests, who all observed the light show and clapped and cheered at what they were seeing. To try and get some sort of explanation for what he was experiencing, Dan visited an Aboriginal elder, who told him that his property was surrounded by Aboriginal sacred lands, and that the lights were the spirits of the Aboriginals protecting the land. 